We are back at post-apocalyptic New York. Yes, welcome to Arverne East and Rockaway Beach. I'm going to see what I could pull in this fascinating, fascinating region. So Arvern East is a abandoned area of Queens. It is close to Far Rockaway, and uh, it is just on the beach uh, right over here. So this used to be a bunch of beach bungalows, and earlier there were hotels all down this strip. Uh, this was the go-to place in the early 1900s, but it has uh, it, it, it turned into an area of urban decay, and everything was raised because of the uh, crime rate. So I came here, and uh, last time I was here, it, it, this area was very much hit or miss. And the one big hit that I got was a Barber Half from 1908. And also, Rockway Beach has a fascinating history in itself. Uh, I started out, I did a, uh, a live stream this morning, so the first part of this video is uh, a live stream from this morning. We're gonna pick it up right after the live stream ended. All right, so just finished my live stream, got a buck 25 on that and a silver penny. Silver penny. I'm sorry, not a silver penny, geez. A silver quarter. And um, a, uh, whatchamacallit penny, a wheat penny from 1917. And buck 25 and change. So we just added a penny to that. Interesting piece of big metal that uh, rings up like copper. Wonder what this could be, a belt buckle? No, not a belt bu buckle. Although you could fit a belt through in here. Got a quarter. All right, we got a relic of some sort here. It rings up just like um, a dime, but uh, I don't know if it's an old pipe. I see a little bit of a uh, point here where there could have been a hole. Not sure what the use is. We'll bring it home, clean it up. We got a dime, we're rich. Yeah, so on my live stream, a lot of people were correctly saying, Merrill, go down to the shore, but look at what I'm seeing far back. This is a green penny far back. This is something that has been in the water or spent a good amount of time in the water. So I'm really feeling far back today. Okay, teachable moment. Yes, you know, the, when you are in the middle of a beach season, you know, June, July, and there's a lot of people that are in the water. Uh, yes, you know, you're going to get drops in the swim areas. But we're talking about uh, that I'm making this video in October. where We're like mid-October right now. And basically, a lot of the stuff has been pushed back. We're getting the big storms, and late in the season, the further away from the shoreline you want to go, as far as I'm concerned. That's not to say all of the stuff has been pushed out, and you certainly can justify the logic that something that's heavier, you know, yes, it's going to take longer to travel, especially if it was dropped in the swim area. But I'm telling you, if you're finding quarters, if you're finding fishing weights far back, why can't a ring go far back? Another dime. Quarter. Quarter. So in terms of uh, modes that I like on the Equinox, I'm going to switch to Field 2, even though I'm at the beach. Um, it, uh, I've used it before. It has worked really, really well. It's a very fast mode. So field two on the Equinox, it, it basically, it, if you have four or five targets that are really close to each other, you're going to be able to hear a distinct sound for each one of them and see a distinct target for each one of them. It kind of goes awry when you bring it into the salt uh, water section, but we're kind of in the um, the upper range of the, um, the high tide uh, area of the beach. So the stuff that's just basically covered and you know, the end point of where everything is getting pushed, you know, wave after wave, uh, tide cycle after tide cycle. And, you know, it's somewhat dry right now. So field mode two is a good way to go. Uh, there's other uh, detectors that have similar things. It's just the, the peak um, target separation mode for any detector. Uh, that should work. Well, I shouldn't say any detector, but... 
Um, that's what I was going for. I wanted to be able to hear all of these targets because uh, there were sure were a lot of them. And it's what I'm looking for. Hear that? It's kind of my go-to mode in park. And it lets you see which, uh, if there's multiple signals. This was flashing 30. But also penny. And it is a zinc penny, but let's see if there's something else here or... No, nothing else here. But um, you should ex experiment. Here we go. It's also in 50 tone mode when you're on uh, field two. So basically 50 tone mode enables you to not have to look to the detector's screen while you're detecting because you can hear something that's really high, that's gonna be a high number. Something that's a lower tone, uh, that's gonna be a lower number. And once you know that gold is going to be uh, anywhere between zero, actually zero and 21, um, you know, because there's different alloys of it and it's, it could be mixed. Uh, but um, you get to know the sounds. You get to know what each one of these things uh, could be. So I spend very little time looking at my screen. Uh, it's really just a very good listening detector. And I, I like it that way. Last signal was a dime. We have a fishing weight. These are good because uh, they tell me that other detectorists haven't really searched back here. These are so easy to find. Another dime. Another dime. So I want to add at this point, I've taken a few laps down to the shoreline just to check. I don't see anything in terms of target frequency. It's all back here. So uh, I'm going to stay back here. Got another quarter. Listen, a lot of you are watching my videos because you want to learn beach detecting. Stick where the volume is. That is crucial. If you are not seeing a lot of targets down close to the water and a ton far back, guess what? Stick far back. It's okay to take that occasional route down to the water just to verify and look around. But if you are seeing a smaller volume of targets, go back to where you have the larger volume of targets. Got another quarter. Another quarter. Got another quarter. Remember, only you can stop coin pollution, but we don't want you to. Another quarter. Another quarter. If you were going to take an educated guess what my next coin was going to be, what would it be? Quarter. 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 What's my favorite sandwich at McDonald's? Quarter pounded with cheese. You know, I was once bleeding from the head and, uh, you know, the doctor didn't want it to get, you know, infected, so he had to quarterize the wound. Oh man, the streak is broken. It's it's just a dime. The green one, meaning it's been in the water for a while, but um, just a dime. Okay, cemetery tag. These are freaky, man. I, I've been finding a lot of these lately. Thought that I found uh, something really good. I found a grave marker. I suppose I could reconnect the owner, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm a little worried that that was a message from the heavens saying that I've been having too much Taco Bell lately. Dime. Guess what? Quarter. Now take a look at this signal. 12, 13. Where there's a lot of quarters, that's where heavier objects could go. Chances are this is a dime, but we're going to dig it and we're going to see. Got it in my scoop. Let's see. Still 1213. Right over here. It is a dime. I'm sorry, a nickel. Chances are it's a nickel, I meant to say. But uh, again, heavier objects, you follow the trail. Wherever the hell it is, that's where you go. Here's another nickel. Hmm, another relic. This uh, might be something from a skeleton key. That's what I'm guessing. Another quarter. Nickel. Quarter. 
another dime you guessed it another quarter another relic uh this i think is a vintage hair clip this educated guess is because i clearly read books on vintage hair clips they'd rung up like uh gold but it's obviously not um yeah interesting well, it, it, I'm telling you, the beach uh, got eaten away, and we're down to an older layer, as evidenced by the quarter, the penny, uh, and uh, little relics like this. Another dime. We're going until we get a ring, man. We're getting a ring. So, if you're new here, welcome to the wackiest metal detecting channel that there is. I don't know how this tradition came about, but every time that I find a ring, like, I get Taco Bell. I celebrate with Taco Bell. Not the healthiest food, I know, I know, but um, it's become a tradition. So, you know, all the other stuff is great, but I'm fiending for a ring because I'm kind of fiending for Taco Bell. Got this many targets, it, it's a matter of numbers, and we can found the heavier stuff. Uh, I'm pretty confident we're going to find a ring today. Another dime. Ah, so close. I thought this was something. I saw this end popping out. Um, it is just something for fishing. But, hey man, we're getting closer with each scoop. Here's proof we're getting closer to rings. Not the ring I want, but technically it's a ring. Dime. Oh, we have a button alert. Look at this. Yeah, I made my way down to the shore. It's low tide. Just want to give it a check. Let's, uh, let's see what we could do. This is an old button. Big, heavy target. Look at this. I thought I had a cell phone or something. But uh, this is an old piece of metal. So here's what I notice. Right where I'm standing here, here, back, this is where the coins start. Uh, and everywhere here, it is really compact. I found that button, and I found a few other items. But, uh, you know, I would say the majority of the time that I'm going to spend here forwards is going to be further back. There just was a higher volume of stuff, a higher pushback. Could there be a super heavy ring up here? Absolutely, but that's like finding a needle in a haystack. So my thinking is we go where the volume is and um, you can see this, look at this. It's a rock on top of the surface. Watch the camera work. I, I think I deserve an Emmy. Look at that. That's a sign that you are reaching some far down beach that- Where's the rock? Uh, you know, really you haven't seen this sand in a long time. This was just carved off. And this is very tough. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to maybe do a little bit more swinging in this area. There's no way I could get the whole entire beach. But again, we're using data to uh, understand and make informed decisions as we move on. So that's what we're going to do. So how can we use data as a metal detectorist uh, on the beach at least? Well, even if you neatly cover up your holes, you still will be able to see where you dig. And it's like a scatter plot that goes down the beach. You can see where you dug, you can see where you've had success. And as you move down the beach, you use that data to figure out where to go from there. You dig? So we're back on the coin. Here's another dime. What the heck is this? Aha! Uh -huh. We are on the jewelry. So this is something that, uh, yeah, it's not a ring, but it's got ring in the suffix. We have an earring. Another quarter. Quarter. Green nickel. Another nickel. Oh, come on. Come on. Bummer. Dime. Quarter. Nickel. Quarter. Quarter. Dime. Man, it's for an old lockbox. I think that says at the top, it's either a design or it says 1916. That's awesome. Still going like the Energizer Bunny. Nickel. Another nickel. I'm not going to lie. I'm cherry picking a little bit. I want a nice, chunky, golden ring. Oh, for the love of God. All right, so I'm go I've gone, I've started by going down that staircase over there. I work my way over to here. There's less targets over here, and it makes sense. There's another exit over here, but in this section, it's a little bit desolate and abandoned because people just don't go here. Uh, over there, yes, they do. Hello, this is a public service announcement from Merrill. Do you like to walk? No. 
neither does anybody else. So pay close attention to where the entrances are at the beach. Staircases, uh, ramps down the hill, everything else on this specific beach was barricaded off. And you got to understand the tendencies of people. People don't like to walk, especially if they're carrying kids' beach chairs and everything. You know, their, their picnic and their blanket. They don't want to walk. So you have to understand where the high volume areas of a beach are. You get some left and right movement of the waves, but for the most part, it's going to be pulled out and pushed right back in. So you have to understand, uh, it sure helps if you go uh, to that beach and you see it during the summer, uh, peak season, but uh, you, you have to understand where people go. But um, over here, not so much. So I'm gonna work my way back uh, to the staircase and see what we can get, or maybe head down there. I'm just, no way I'm leaving without a ring today. Holy crap, that's a jellyfish. Look at this guy. Got some Fibonacci in there. All right, look at this. What is under the sand? You get a harder packed layer where you have um, items that are a little bit smaller and move, you know, all the way down to the bigger stuff. And what is this? Okay. I don't want an Emmy Award for camera work. I want a Pulitzer Prize or a Nobel Peace Prize. I do have a signal down here that I'm going to try to pull. I know, I know, use gloves. Right here. When you see all of these uh, finely packed, I'm going to use my shovel to get this out. But uh, my point is there's a, a harder packed layer under the beach. Nothing really goes past this. And we're down to it now. Ironically, the signal I was looking for is this Corona cap. But, uh, you know, look at, look at this. You know, that's what keeps stuff from falling even further. Oh man, it's a first for me. I, it's the new uh, iPhone earbuds. The Bluetooth ones. Quarter. All right, new spot. Let's uh, see what the uh, low tide gives us before we go further back. Another nickel. Nah. <sighs> nickel. Got a funky relic that I would appreciate a lot more if I had a taco in my belly. Nah. Got another funky relic that I gotta clean up. Gee, a quarter. I've never seen one of those before. Quarter. It rhymes with water, which I desperately need, but I need a ring even more. Another quarter with the green peeling off. So we got pushing both sides. Well, funky piece of brass. Here comes the tides. What's that? What's that? Finally. Yes, boardwalk people, I am the fool that is talking to himself and pacing like a maniac on the beach. This is a stainless steel ring. It is nothing special, but nonetheless, you know, metal detecting is a practice in persistence. And uh, I kind of get persistence joy. You know, it, it's uh, something that I teach students in school. There's something called grit. And it is a tendency that people have to finish the job, get an idea in their head, finish the job. And Taco Bell, look, man, I, I could uh, at any point say I want Taco Bell, and it, it's it's silly. It's become a silly joke. Uh, I could get it out at any time, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I like uh, I like the tradition that uh, we have. It makes it fun. You know, it's like okay, I'm gonna go there to celebrate. You know, taco is just a taco unless it is a sweet taco. I mean, I'm not even saying add sugar, but... Adding sugar to the tacos, let's not go there. I'm gonna really enjoy this trip to Taco Bell. This took me a while. I don't even know how much change I have, but we'll count it up. We got that ring. Okay, good. Man, that was a workout. Now I gotta walk back to my car. I probably walked a mile away looking for this. 
Rockaways has a really nice boardwalk, by the way. If you're in the uh, New York area, um, I always bring the hoverboard down here. That, that's pretty cool. I think that's my midlife crisis purchase. You know, just flying down this boardwalk in a uh, hoverboard, going to Taco Bell. That's living the life, man. That's all I can say. All right, before we go to Taco Bell, take a look at this. This is an area called Arvern East. And I have a video that actually is one of my favorites that I uh, put out. Right in the middle of here is where bungalows used to be. And you see, it's like a barren wasteland right now. I call it post-apocalyptic New York. But right over here, uh, I think literally right over here in front of us, right where bungalows used to be, this used to be beachfront. And I found a, uh, whatchamacallit, a barber half. Uh, 19, it was either 1903, 1908. Um, I'm gonna put a link to the video uh, up here, but um, check that out. I'm gonna try this again. It was very hit or miss, uh, but uh, in the near future, I'm gonna try again. It was either cans, garbage, or 50 cents with a few wheat cents uh, mixed in too. McDonald's? No, why would we do that to ourselves when there's Taco Bell? Welcome to Taco Bell. How may I help you? Hello. Can I get uh, two bean burritos and uh, two hard tacos and uh, cherry Pepsi, please? Hold on. You want two bean burritos and what else? Yeah, two bean burritos, uh, two hard tacos, and a cherry Pepsi, please. Small, medium, or large? Um, uh, medium, please. Anything else? That's it. If everything's correct, then you just need to pull forward. The total is 10.06. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. In life, you gotta celebrate the little victories. It keeps you happy. But what doesn't keep you happy is... Oh my God, never going back to this Taco Bell again. Just saying, how do you do this? You don't put sour cream in a bean burrito? Come on, man. All right, we're gonna have to count this up. All right, so for the wrap up, I got $11.58 in change. First, here's the earring. And the uh, ring, it was uh, stainless steel. Those little things, I think, are bullet pieces. I think they are bullets that have been shot. Um, there is the cemetery tag. Oh, this was the nice surprise. That is a silver dime. So I got two silvers uh, here. Uh, one was the silver dime that was 1940-something, I think 1946. And then there was the quarter that was 1957. Here's the close-up on the Skeleton Key locks. Uh, I also found the uh, Apple earbuds, whatever the heck that is, and a few unidentified items that I'm going to have to scrap. And I got uh, more than $11 in change, which will go towards my goal of pulling $1,000 in clad this year. So last but not least, I got a series called uh, Becoming a Millionaire Metal Detecting, where I take all of the clad that I find and I invested in the stock market. And my first goal was to pull $1,000 in earnings from metal detecting, and I'm well on pace for that, but I wanna kinda try to raise that goal. I want there to be uh, $100 pulled in clad. So uh, it, being that it's October, I have my work cut out for me. So we're gonna have to really have a very productive end of the year, but you shoot high, you aim high, that's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Will I make it to my $1,000 goal? Let me know in the comments. Just to be clear, it's that uh, top uh, row that says coin revenue. I'm going for $1,000 just in that by the end of the year, by the end of 2019. Do you think I'm going to make it? Let me know.